Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, depending on where you are. Uh, welcome to another meeting of Symmetry in Newcastle. Today, our speaker is our own George Willis from University of Newcastle, and he'll be talking about constructing groups with flat rank greater than one. So the floor is yours, George. Well, thank you, Mikhail, and thank you, everyone, for coming along. Um, yeah, that's the title there on the screen, Constructing Groups with Flat Rank Greater Than One. What I'll do is I'll go over some of the ideas that will be used or in, well, uh, mentioned in the title and also that will be used in the, uh, in the argument uh, before um, going on to uh, give the proof, um, if there's time, the full proof or um, at least uh, a good part of the proof um, of the um, theorem that was in the abstract. So throughout, G will be a totally disconnected locally compact group. And um, this talk is about uh, the tidy subgroups and uh, flat rank for, the, for these groups. And so if we have a, I'm sorry that um, I'm, I'm trying different methods to do these uh, online presentations and um, um, we'll see how this one goes. But, um, oh. Seems like I can, I can highlight with the pen. So let, let me do that. Um, so we'll have some um, compact open, if we have a compact open subgroup in, in our TDLC group G and some element X in G, then um, we can define these uh, two subgroups um, corresponding to, to U and X. So, so U plus is the intersection of all the um, Images of U under um, conjugation by positive powers of X and U minus is the same thing for negative powers. And then the compact open subgroup can be uh, is defined to be a tidy for X if two conditions are satisfied, and they are that uh, U is equal to the product of U plus and U minus, and that this uh, set U double minus, uh, which is in fact a um, automatically a subgroup. That this should be a closed subgroup. And then um, I'm not going to go into it, but then uh, tidy subgroups that exist for each, for each x. And then the scale of x is a, is a positive integer. It's um, the index of um, u plus in the conjugate of u plus by x. Uh, it's, it follows pretty easily from the definition that, uh, that u plus is a sub, uh, subgroup of this conjugate and has finite index and um, the scale then is that positive integer. And it can be shown that that's independent of the subgroup U that's tidy for X. And we'll say that X, the element X is uniscalar if um, the scale of X and its inverse are both one. Now, I'm not doing much more than just going over definitions here. So um, uh, it'll become maybe uh, more apparent throughout the talk what, uh, what the implications of some of these things are, but, um, but they are the definitions. And then the, the uh, title used the word um, uh, flatness. And so here is the definition of flatness. A subgroup of G is flat. If there's some compact open subgroup U that's tidy for every, every element of H. And then the unischalar subgroup of H, uh, which we note by H sub U, is just a set of uniscalar elements in H. And then um, this has an alternative characterization that uh, this uniscalar subgroup is actually a subgroup. subgroup. It's the set of, um, of um, elements of H that stabilize the tidy subgroup. Now, let me give uh, an example. Um, let's see here. So we'll, we'll let G, for example, will G be uh, the general linear group, um, GL3 of the periodic numbers, for some prime P. Um, and we'll let X be, let's, um, 
elements initially anyway, take X to be the element, say uh, P squared diagonal element. And uh, non-central because we want uh, there to be some non-trivial action by, by uh, conjugation. Then um, you, you, which will be the set of all uh, matrices of the form uh, uh, that have um, multiples of P above the diagonal and uh, P adic integers below the diagonal. This subgroup is tidy for um, X. So this is where all the uh, AIJ are theatic integers. This is tidy for X. Um, now, the um, subgroup U plus, it can be uh, seen as just a set of all uh, lower triangular matrices in, in U. And, um, the, and U minus is the, um, Is the uh, I'm going to call it out, but it's a set of lower triangular matrices. And so um, U, it can be seen then is equal to U, uh, U is equal to the product of U plus and U minus. This is just the uh, usual factoring of a matrix into its upper, upper triangular and lower triangular parts. And the um, fact that um, we take uh, U to have P above the diagonal, that's what, uh, that's what allows us to do that because it means that we can, um, uh, that in the top left, left, left corner, we have a, a non-zero element that we can uh, pivot on when you're doing this uh, factorization. Okay, so that's uh, the first condition, TA, and um, I'll just say that, um, so TA holds, And uh, I'll just say TB is automatic in um, in Beatrix Lee groups. So this uh, subgroup is tidy, and the scale of X can be seen is um, equal to uh, P the fourth, and um, that's equal to the scale of X inverse. And um, what else? You know, I should say something about uh, a flat group. Um, yeah, we set H. So, so this X is diagonal. If we set X to be the set of uh, diagonal matrices, uh, then that is flat. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to check all the details here. Um, this is just um, uh, illustrating the ideas. But the, um, we see here that um, the, these notions correspond to some ideas from linear algebra in the case when the group is a linear group. And um, those ideas have uh, inspired some of what I want to uh, talk about uh, today. So, um, here is a theorem about flat groups. Suppose we have some uh, let's go back to highlighting. Suppose we have some uh, finitely generated flat group. Then the uniscalar subgroup is is normal, and the quotient of uh, H by its unicellular scalar subgroup is a free abelian group of some finite rank because H is finitely generated. This holds actually if, uh, if G is not finitely generated, but I, I'll just keep things simpler, just talk about finitely generated groups. 
then uh, there's also some uh, other positive integer q such that if, whenever we have a tidy subgroup, it can be written as a product of, of subgroups um, where these subgroups have a, a particular form. Um, if we conjugate one of these subgroups uj by x for any x in h, then we either get a subgroup that is uh, contained in uj or contained uj, uh, depending on which happens depends on x, but um, it's always one or the other, or it might happen that uh, um, the conjugate is always equal to uj, uh, which is the case when j is zero. And then for all j, um, this group uj tilde, um, which is um, defined to be the union of all conjugates over elements of h bar of uh, uj, this it, it turns out is a, is a subgroup and is a closed and non-compact subgroup of g. It's, it's a non-compact if j is bigger than one. And also there are integers, there's an integer sj and a subjective homomorphism from h to the integers such that um, the modular function of the restriction of uh, conjugation by x to, um, to uj tilde, that modular function is equal to sj to the power uh, rho jx. So that's um, uh, the theorem about the, the structure of, of flat groups. And then the number r is the, is the flat rank of h. And um, this uh, homomorphism from h to the, um, to the positive rational numbers under multiplication, that's a, um, that's, uh, we'll call that a root of h. And uh, the, the um, uj tilde we'll call a corresponding root subgroup. Now, let's see if I can. So let me um, give another example now. So coming back to the case when G is um, um, GL3 of the periodic uh, rational. So, so we, we have this group um, again. And H is the diagonals. Then um, the UJ, are uh, matrices of the form um, where well, we have something on the diagonal. And then um, uh, let's now call them UIJ actually. And then it'll be um, um, IRJ. Um, now this is uh, with um, well, I won't, won't specify all the conditions, but there, there are that form. This is um, for um, i uh, i not equal to j. Uh, these are the um, these are the root, root subgroups. And then the, um, the uh, homomorphisms are um, the homomorphisms that are obtained when we quotient such, uh, conjugate such a subgroup by a diagonal element. Uh, it will, uh, why don't I just do that? If we conjugate by, um, say, uh, x11. So I'm such a, uh, um, conjugate such a root subgroup by, by um, a diagonal. Um, this will give us some, um, uh, if I get it right, I think it'll be uh, XII, XJJ inverse, A, IJ. So our homomorphism, 
will send um, a homomorphism and sends um, we call this x. X goes to the p-adic absolute value of x i i x j j inverse. Okay, so that's um, illustrating the uh, theorem. And then um, you might wonder, well, when are, um, how do we find flat groups? Well, there is a, um, and that's really what the talk is about. Um, here is a, a theorem that um, every finitely generated nilpotent subgroup of G is flat and every polycyclic subgroup is virtually flat. That is, it has a finite index subgroup that's flat. Um, now, uh, perhaps if I go back to the, um, yeah, so that uh, is illustrated by, by the previous example here. The uh, diagonal um, matrices are maybe not finally generated, but they are uh, an abelian group, and that's what, uh, Causes it to be uh, to be flat, um, but um, you know the, the problem with this. Oh, going back to linear algebra, we can always find um, uh, we can always diagonalize matrices. Perhaps I should go back even further. Um, Yeah, but this will do. Um, so we have these uh, these root subgroups, um, and um, they um, correspond to um, eigenvalues in the in the Lie algebra. Now, in a um, linear group, we can um, uh, always find eigenvalues by uh, by finding roots of the characteristic polynomial, and uh, that's the case in, in um, the case in many groups where we know where we can find flat groups, we can find them because of some uh, extra structure. It's a linear group, or um, the group might be the automorphism group of a building, in which case the um, the uh, flat subgroups correspond to um, <coughs> to stabilizers of an apartment. So, in, in cases where we can find um, groups with um, higher flat rank. It's because of some extra structure that we happen to know about the group. And uh, this theorem tells us that, well, if we have a group that's um, uh, finite, finite generated nilpotent subgroup of G, then that, that is flat. But there's still a problem of, of finding such subgroups. Um, and what I want to talk about today is um, how we can, um, uh, another method for constructing groups with higher flat rank. Perhaps I should say, point out here that uh, it's a it's it's obvious anyway, but it's a consequence of uh, of this theorem that um, the uh, a singularly generated subgroup is flat. Um, but that's all we can go if we, that's as far as we can go from the intrinsic structure of the group. So what I want to talk about today is uh, is finding higher rank flat groups just using the intrinsic structure of the group. And um, there are some ideas that are going to be used in the um, in the uh, proof. So uh, and and some uh, facts about them. So uh, let me just go through these definitions now. So again, we have we have a a totally disconnected locally compact group and some element in, in in that group. Then the parabolic subgroup is a set of all elements in G such that as when we conjugate by non-negative powers. Um, that set has compact closure. The contraction group is a subgroup of the, um, of the parabolic subgroup. It's a uh, subgroup such that when we conjugate by, uh, by uh, positive powers of uh, X, that these conjugates actually converge to the identity. So that's the contraction subgroup. Then there's the, uh, the Levy factor. That's the um, intersection of the parabolic subgroup for X with the parabolic subgroup for um, 
x inverse, and this is the same as the um, um, set of all elements in the group, such that when we conjugate uh, by x for the you know, conjugacy, conjugacy, conjugacy class under x of, of that element has uh, compact closure. And then there's the, the nub subgroup, that's uh, the intersection of the closure of the contraction subgroup with the parabolic subgroup of the um, of x inverse. Um, now, um, I should say here that these terms, the parabolic subgroup, uh, the Levy subgroup, and also the term flatness, flat for the groups that uh, were um, um, mentioned before, that these names were all suggested by uh, Udo Baumgartner, and I think these uh, suggestive names are also um, a factor behind the, um, the uh, theorem I'm going to present soon. Um, let's see if we can. It's in the wrong place. Oh, oh that's all right. That's over there. Um, okay, so uh, some examples. Uh, let's come back again to our case of uh, GL3 uh, QP and X, the, um, the uh, diagonal element. Then the, um, what's the uh, parabolic subgroup? The um, yeah, so the parabolic subgroup for X. Is, um, it's a set of all uh, upper triangular elements. But now with um, about the diagonal, we can have uh, any chaotic number. So, um, well, I see yeah, all, all AIJ are chaotic numbers now, not necessarily chaotic integers. So that's the uh, parabolic subgroup, the contraction subgroup, and um, it's just the uh, subgroup of the parabolic with um, with ones on the diagonal. So this corresponds to the uh, unipotent. Um, Elements in the group. The, um, yeah, the Levy subgroup is just the diagonals. And um, the NUB subgroup in this case. Uh, is trivial. So that's um, that's how these ideas turn out in the um, in the um, uh, case of this example. And if you're familiar with um, uh, algebraic groups, then um, you'll uh, you'll see why these names are uh, suggested. Now, there's uh, some facts general facts about these um, subgroups that we'll be using in the, uh, in the proof. The first is that the, um, the parabolic subgroup and, and hence the, the Levy vector, these are closed subgroups of, of X. Um, this requires some proof, but, it's, uh, but it was proved in um, my uh, 1994 paper on entire subgroups. Um, so it's uh, long been known. The, the contraction subgroup is a normal subgroup of the parabolic subgroup. That's uh, 
fairly easily verified. And then it's equal to the, um, the parabolic subgroup is equal to the product of the Levy factor and the contraction subgroup. This is in uh, the paper with uh, Udo Baumgartner from uh, earlier this century. Um, the nub of X is a, is a compact normal subgroup of the, of the Levy factor. Um, yeah, this was in a paper from about 2015. So again, I'm just, I'm just um, quoting a lot of results that I'm, that I'm going to be uh, using. Um, also, if, if U is compact and open and the nub is contained in U, and this, is, this fact really is the, um, one of the main reasons that we're interested in the nub. If you, so if U is compact and open and the nub is, is contained in U, then there is some positive integer such that if we uh, form the intersection of the uh, conjugates of X under X for K, for K ranging between zero and this positive integer N, that subgroup is tidy for X. So this, this gives us a way to define tidy subgroups. And um, another fact that we're going to be using is that all of these subgroups uh, don't change if we um, replace X by X the N for some positive N. Okay, so now um, I'm ready to uh, state the uh, theorem and um, uh, indicate the proof. So suppose now we have our, our totally disconnected locally compact group G and an element of, of G, and we let Y be any element of the, the Levy factor. Then there um, are elements Z in G and a compact subgroup K that is normalized by both Z and Y, uh, such that the contraction subgroup for Z is equal to the contraction subgroup for X and the same with the Levy factors. And now the group generated by Z, Y, and K, this is abelian modulo K and hence flat uh, by an argument um, um, along the lines of the theorem that I stated before about uh, finally generated more potent groups being flat. Um, same argument shows that uh, if you have a group that's an extension of a, a compact group by an abelian one, then it's, um, then it's flat. Now, um, if it happens that uh, no compact open subgroup of G is normalized by X, and no compact open subgroup of the Levy factor is normalized by Y, then the flat rank of this subgroup is equal to two. So this gives us a way to define groups with, with um, higher uh, flat rank. Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to give another example. Um, let me... Um, Mention an example now that to, to keep in mind as we um, as we um, look at this theorem. So again, G is um, the uh, three uh, um, general linear group over periodic numbers, G of three QP, and um, I'm going to take X to be um, not quite the not the same element as uh, as before. It will now be say one. P zero um, P inverse. And perhaps I won't call this P. This is just some element that doesn't know what it is. Let's just call this A. And we'll take Y to be a diagonal element. This one. So, um, what um, what's the theorem saying in, in this case? So, the, the parabolic subgroup now you notice this this x is not diagonal and, and y is and X and Y don't, don't commute. So we're not in the position where we can apply directly. Um, yeah, so uh, 
the commutator of x and y is not the uh, not the idea. The parabolic subgroup for x now is um, seven matrices of this form. So this is a um, a uh, typical sort of parabolic subgroup in in, in GL three, and uh, um, what we are going to um, yeah and Y is in and uh, Y is in there. So what we are going to or hoping to do is to by this argument um, get rid of this uh, factor, this, this term here, which is um, which is um, uh, the problem. Right? It's why x and y don't commute, and uh, we're going to um, replace x with with z, which is just the diagonal. But now it's a it's a, um, a general abstract argument that that, that does that. Okay, so here is the um, here is the proof. For uh, convenience, we'll write the, the Levy factor just as L, and um, ah, sorry, I should have this example. Let me just come back to this example um, for a minute because I didn't say what the Levy factor is. Um, and the contraction subgroup for X is um, this subgroup. Actually, the um, yeah you know, contraction subgroup doesn't uh, doesn't enter into this argument, but um, um, it might if we want to start doing things with this uh, with this um, theorem. But anyway, now let me return to the proof. So we let L be the Levy factor. Um, then um, x and y both belong to, to L. And we choose some compact open subgroup U that's, that's tidy for y. Then since the nub of x is, uh, is compact and normal in L, we can suppose that the nub of x is, um, is a subgroup of U. Now, um, we're going to apply the next uh, proposition and uh, I think, um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll state the proposition and then uh, there's another proposition later that I'm going to state as well. And then if there's time at the, at the end, I'll come back and indicate the, uh, the proofs of these propositions. In some ways, these are the most interesting parts of the proof and they, um, they um, uh, will apply more generally, I think. So what is this proposition? Well, it says if we just have any uh, TDLC group, and some element of uh, of that subgroup, such that um, L is the uh, the entire group L is the Levy factor for X, and we suppose that U is um, is compact and open in L, and the nub of X is contained in U. So this is the these are the conditions that we've just arranged before stating the proposition. Then the conclusion is that there is some M such that um, X the M normalizes U. Okay, so if we now apply this proposition uh, in our situation, we've, we've got our subgroup U of, um, of the Levy factor that's tidy for Y, and we can now conclude there is some M such that uh, um, X, the M U, X inverse, X to the minus M is equal to U. 
Okay. Now, since y is in the limit factor for x, the conjugates, this set of conjugates has, has compact closure. And so that, that set's covered by a, a finite number of uh, right view cosets. And we can find some number n, which is a multiple of m, such that um, the conjugate of y by x to n belongs to uy. Okay, I'm not sure if I should give a bit more explanation there, but, but let me just um, uh, not do that for a moment. So, so this, this set of conjugates is covered by finitely many of these, uh, of these um, cosets, and u itself is invariant under conjugation by x to the k. And so what happens actually is that uh, as you conjugate by powers of x to the k, um, you cycle through the, the cosets covering this set, and then you return with some n, you return to u to the y. That's essentially what's going on. And um, I need to introduce a bit more notation now. The subgroup u sub zero is the intersection of u under all powers of, um, of um, x, and that's equal to uh, the intersection of u plus and u minus. And we'll need this in the uh, 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 remainder of the proof. Okay, so now here's the second proposition. Um, we suppose we have some TDLC group L and some Y in L. And we choose some U that's tidy for Y. Um, okay, this should, this should be Y here. And, and we let, um, we suppose we have some element uh, V, Y, W, which is in this double code step. Then the claim is that there's some element of U such that if we conjugate this element in the double code set by U, we end up in a much smaller set, the set U zero Y. Okay, so that's, um, that's the second proposition. And um, yeah, that, that um, might be a bit hard to see why that's true at the moment, but, uh, but um, if, if, there's, if there's time, I'll return and indicate, uh, indicate um, how that proof goes. Um, but anyway, we can now apply this proposition um, to our, uh, our situation. So we've just arranged that there's some n such that x to the n y, x to the minus n is u1 y with u1 in u. But now we can choose by the proposition, some element of u, such that this conjugate is equal to u two y, with u two now in u zero, much uh, much smaller subgroup, and we'll put u, we'll put z to be um, this product of u and x to the n. Then the Levy factor and the contraction subgroup don't change because they don't change if we replace x by x to the n. That was a remark. Um, before the, uh, I made before starting the proof, and because U is, um, belongs to U, which is compact and invariant under conjugation by X. Um, if you look at the definitions of the Levy factor and of the contraction subgroup, then these things are easily, easily verified. And so we have then that if we conjugate, uh, y by z, we get the conjugate is u2y with u2 in u0. And we still have that the conjugate of uh, u by z is equal to u. Okay, so this is the z that we're looking for. And now we have to show that, um, that it, uh, it does what's claimed. All right, now the uh, thing about replacing um, u by u0 is that u0 is invariant under conjugation by, by y. And so if we um, look at the conjugate of y to the k by z, this too belongs to uh, u0y for all k. Uh, here's a short um, argument for the case of y squared. You see, if we conjugate y squared by, by z, 
that's just equal to the, um, the, the square of the conjugates. But then we can uh, uh, write each conjugate is, is U2Y and then rearrange that to see that this is equal to the product of U2 and the conjugate of U2 by Y, which is still in U0, uh, Y squared. And uh, so U2 is in, in U0, this conjugate is in U0 and U0 is a group. And so this, this whole thing is in U0. So we, we stay in, in this set when we conjugate um, um, Y squared by Z and the same works for all K. So then it follows that um, if we look now the conjugate of U by Y to the K, that's still invariant under conjugation by Z for all K. But then the intersection of all these conjugates is U0. So that tells us that U0 is invariant under the conjugation by Z. So U0 now is invariant under conjugation by both Y and Z. And not only that, but the commutator um, of uh, Z and Y is equal to U2, which belongs to K. And so this is our uh, um, uh, group that's abelian modulo K and, um, and K is U0, this is, this is a compact set. Group. So um, that is that is flat. Okay. So um, now let's see why it has uh, or when it has flat rank greater than uh, greater than uh, one. So we suppose now that the scale of uh, scale of x is, is is bigger than one. So that tells us that uh, x is not uniscalar. So this some um, so that immediately tells us the flat rank of this group is at least one. But we'll suppose also the scale of um, y restricted to the Levy factor is also bigger than y. And we'll let u now a subgroup of, perhaps I should have used a different letter because this u now is a subgroup of g, not of uh, the Levy factor. It's tidy for, um, for this group. And this, is going, this group is now an h. Then, by what we saw earlier, U is the, is the product of these, um, of these uh, subgroups, root subgroups. And uh, since the scale of X is bigger than one, there's at least one root homomorphism such that, um, and now we'll just um, call the homomorphism from, uh, from H to, to the integers, we'll call that the root homomorphism. Uh, there's at least one such, such that um, rho J of X is not zero. But then since the um, scale of Y restricted to the Levy factor is at least one, there's at least another one, uh, let's call it say rho I, such that rho I of Y is not zero. But since um, the, uh, the corresponding subgroup UI um, is, in, is in the Levy factor, rho I of X will be zero. So now we have two different, uh, different homomorphisms from our, from our flat group to the integers. Um, one of them, they're both non-trivial non homomorphisms, both subjective homomorphisms. One of them is non-zero on X and the other one is zero on X. And so it follows then that there are at least two independent roots and the flat rank is equal to equal to two. So that, that completes the proof of the um, theorem. Now, in the time remaining, um, well, Perhaps I should ask, are there any questions before I? No, well, let me, in the time remaining, um, say something about the proof of Proposition 2. And then if there's still time, I'll go back to Proposition 1. I think proposition uh, one is perhaps a bit less surprising and a bit easier to prove than proposition two. So it's, it's better to start with, uh, with um, proposition two. So uh, what is it? We suppose we have um, um, V Y W in this double coset. And I claim that there's, there's some element of U such that we can conjugate this to, to V in uh, U zero of Y. Well, um, we can suppose 
that um, V is in U minus and uh, W is in U plus. Uh, why is that? Well, because uh, we could write um, um, V might be uh, equal to V minus V plus with V minus in, 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 uh, in U minus and, um, and V plus in U plus. Um, that's because U is tidy. And so VYW is uh, V minus uh, V plus YW. But now this is um, equal to uh, Well, if this is equal to um, sorry, I didn't want to do that. This is equal to uh, v minus um, uh, y y inverse v plus y. W with um, Y inverse V plus Y is also in, um, in U plus. And then write um, Y inverse V plus YW is equal to say um, W plus I think we also want to equal to W minus W plus then the YW is equal to V minus Y, W minus W plus, but that's equal to V minus um, Y, W minus Y inverse, Y, W plus. We know this belongs to U minus. So that's. Um, that's how we can simplify to, to uh, suppose that uh, uh, V and W have, the, have these forms. But now, um, so, so we have um, uh, V, Y, W. Um, we'll put, so U zero equal to V inverse. And if we conjugate by U0, this is equal to Y, W, um, V, where now WV is in, is in, um, is in U. So if we write WV equal to say um, um, so we're going to use the same sort of argument as before, say A minus A plus um, with um, yeah, in, in the uh, corresponding subgroups, then, then YWV is equal to A minus, uh, is equal to Y, A minus A plus. That's equal to um, Y A minus Y inverse, Y A plus with, um, Y A minus 
y inverse in y u minus y inverse and uh, a plus in u plus. Okay, now um, the point is that by doing this, um, we've got the term on the left here is in a smaller subgroup. And so now I uh, claim that uh, for every k greater than or equal to zero, there is some um, u sub k in u minus such that if we um, conjugate uk, we conjugate our the element we started with, vyw by uk, this is equal to um, uh, y to the k plus one, a minus, or say a k, uh, y to the minus k minus one, y, and let's, let's call this element now, so vk, with uh, the first term here, the first factor, y k plus one, um, a k y minus k minus one, in the conjugate of um, u minus and uh, bk in u plus. Now this this holds um, says so use induction to prove this. Now time's time's getting getting short, but so let me just say then um, then the sequence um, UK has an accumulation point um, what are we going to call this accumulation point U prime so and it can be shown that um, you got a space like anyway, I think that u prime um, b y w u prime inverse um, belongs to u zero y u plus. So we've um, replaced the, the u minus that we had here by by u zero. Now this u zero actually can pass over the other side because um, u zero is invariant of the conjugation by y. And then we can run a similar argument um, on the other side to, to um, um, replace the, the u plus here by, by u zero. And that, um, that proves the uh, proposition. Uh, we find a, a, u, a u double prime say that, uh, that um, pushes this uh, u plus down to u zero. And then um, u double prime times u prime is the, um, is the U that um, that we claim existed. Okay, so that, I think um, that's a good time to uh, stop. So thank you. Are there any questions? Wow, there that seems that people don't have questions or no, Pierre Emmanuel seems to be wanting to say something. Oh, uh, yes, if I may, George, uh, I was wondering whether, do, do I understand correctly that from your main theorem, you, you deduce that the flat rank uh, does not increase if uh, you replace the ambient group by the Levy subgroup of uh, any element? Is that a consequence of your theorem? Um, if you, sorry, what was that? If you replace the group by the Levy subgroup? Yes, then the flat, the flat, the flat rank cannot in, 
increase you the um yeah i guess that's right yeah So in, in particular, if, if the initial group has flat rank one, then every Levy subgroup is a is uniscalar. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. And on the other hand, you can iterate this and um, and um, look at the common Levy subgroup for um, say Z and Y, and then if you find something with it's not uniscalar in there, then you can go up the flat rank through. Any other questions? Oh, oh so there's a question in the chat from Udo. Yeah. Just, will it be possible to extend the arguments to get bigger flat ranks? Ah, yes. I um, Yeah, I think I, already, I just answered that one that, uh, yeah, if you oh. if you look at the um, the uh, uh, common Levy subgroup for x x and uh, z, and um, there's an element in there that has um, that's not uniscalar, then you can repeat the argument and go up to flat rank three. The um, the thing about this argument is that it doesn't change the, the element Y that you find in the Levy subgroup. The change is, is to the, um, the element X that you, you start with. And uh, so when you're, when you're repeating the argument, you might find some element, um, maybe W in the common Levy subgroup for Y and Z. And then you modify Y and Z again to, to get a, a group with flat rank three. Any further questions for George? Well, if not, let's thank George one more time. And hopefully let's meet again soon at some seminar. <laughs>